Right. I'm your host, Robin Berardini, and each and every Thursday, Dr. Walter Tom from Dr. Tom Cosmetic Surgery, drtomcosmetic.com, three locations, Santa Rosa, Napa, and Maui. Remember them at 707-542-8346. Let's stay young together. Nominated by you eight years in a row running. Voted for you as the most best, wonderful team, the cosmetic surgery team. <laughs> three years in a row, they've just added esthetician. And as I understand it, Dr. Tom, you were invited to be a lecturer at the conference for the annual California of Cosmetic Surgery 2003. Welcome in in San Diego. Thank welcome you in. and welcome back Robin. <laughs> we you. missed you and happy holidays you and well. very merry everything. You, Everybody you out well. there. You as well. And it looks like we have a handful here today. We do. Uh, we, we, we'll <laughs> jump into our topic but I first I want to introduce again on air and they've been with us before. Uh, you know we now are bringing our team our wonderful team along and Lovely. so we have on my right side because we're on YouTube now on my right uh, is Mary who's our lead nurse so how you doing Mary I'm doing great how are you <laughs> I'm good and so I have to tell you that Mary and the next person I'm introducing are a little nervous so we're gonna kind of make them feel at home and this okay. is Bridie who's been on the show with us as well who's our medical assistant and a dermatologic medical assistant for 11 years and we snatched her away after my buddy dr. Western retired and mm -hmm. now she works with us so we're really happy to have them both here how are you doing hey, welcome. Doing great. thank you good we're, to see you guys that's fantastic so yes Robin thank you um, I was lucky enough to be invited down to the California Academy of Cosmetic Surgery annual meeting. It was in San Diego in November just last month. Mm -hmm. um, I'm a real proud member of it. I love it. I actually was a past president of that society mm -hmm. and um, we were asked to come down and speak and it was a three-day conference down in San Diego. So um, I always like to bring our team because education is always perpetual, right? We talk well, about that all the time. Statement. And so both Mary and Bridie both came along with me as well. So we're here to chat about that conference and what we learned. I would love to hear about it because there's so many things going on. I don't know what the new trends are or what's you know forward front. Can you fill us in? Absolutely. Bye. Thank you. Um, so I what I thought was um, since Bridie's kind of the newest, she's been with us for a year now, uh, the newest member of the team though, Bridie, I was kind of wondering what was your take on going down to the, besides of course loving to hear me talk? Well, that was amazing. <laughs> the first little tidbit is it was right. so great seeing uh, Dr. Tom up there. He's right. such a natural speaker and a uh, great educator. So, uh, of course, going down to beautiful San Diego was, was wonderful. So thank you for taking me. And, you know, coming from a more a traditional office, um, medical office in dermatology, we touched a little bit about, a little bit on uh, cosmetics, but not as much as I am in this beautiful cosmetic world now. So really getting to see all the different speakers and what is really out there under the huge umbrella of cosmetic surgery, all the different procedures and treatments, uh, it really opened my eyes and there's just about something for everybody actually. Seemingly so. Uh, yeah. Was it well attended? I think so. It was my first conference, so it seemed pretty It was. Pretty busy. It, it, was a, it was actually very nice attendance there. Um, there is sort of the granddaddy of the societies that I belong to is the American Academy of Cosmetic Surgery. And so that's the bigger one where we draw people from all around the country and actually the world. We did have some international speakers with us as well at the California meeting, but it's primarily the California Cosmetic Surgeons. Uh, and what I like about this particular meeting is it's more intimate. And and because it's smaller, we spend more time kind of interacting with each other. We're at the, the larger academy, you know, I, and I speak there as well. You kind of speak, but it's so big, you, you, it's hard to get in to, to chat with the speakers sure. because we certainly learn from the lectures, but a lot that we learn is actually from that one-on-one -on -one communication. Um, Mary, what, what did you take away? You've been coming to these meetings with me for the last have. 10 yes. years, right? Yes, I want to thank you for always including me on going to these because it, it's really something I look forward to. I missed when we had a little hiatus and couldn't go, so thank you for including me. Um, I do love that it's one of the smaller ones and that you can, I personally as an RN, could speak with other nurses, other doctors. Um, that's one of my favorite parts, other than seeing you speak. Oh, okay. So you can, <laughs> okay. I, I, you can tell that I, you can tell that I must have just given them a Christmas bonus or something. They're being nice to me today. Okay. So, you know, I'm kind of thinking, Bridie, since you're the newest to the member and maybe can the, the listeners, and thank you listeners, by the way, oh, happy yes. holidays, um, that maybe they can identify with you more not being in the cosmetic or surgical and medical world as Mary and I have been for over the Oh my God! I, over <laughs> two, years. two decades, two decades, right? Yeah. Um, wow. What were what were some of the things? Uh, any specifics or something that you walked away with said, oh, you know, that's kind of neat. What what would you like to share with the the listeners? 
Yeah, well, you know, get to see a lot out there. And from personally my own uh, seeing the difference in how fillers really can change a face. It can be a little or a lot, and it can be what customized obviously to the patient, what they're wanting to, you know, make the best of what they would like to do. Mm -hmm. And um, so each of the presenters would get up and tell what they did or show what they did. And uh, there are a lot of different fillers, you know, oh, yeah. along that line of fat grafting is also, I guess, a natural filler, so to speak, but just what can be done to the face in that aspect of putting, uh, you know, a little bit here, there, just depending on what you're wanting to improve on. There's yeah. a lot out there and yeah. it, it speaks to all kinds. Patient of specific as Dr. Very specific, yes, yeah. exactly. So yeah. Maddie, you know, we talk about, um, uh, patient specifics and, and so we might use a different type of filler and, and for those who maybe are just first time listeners, uh, fillers we're referring to Restylane and Juvederm, they're hyaluronic gels, uh, hyaluronic acid, uh, which is a um, manufactured in, you know, obviously in a, in a sterile medical facility uh, and it's a natural component really in all living things and in particular for our collagen. Uh, but was there anything that was more broader based in terms of how you approach the face? It, that maybe was uh, interesting to you as the f different physicians, not just me, but the other physicians were, were speaking. Was there anything? And we had a few, by the way, we had uh, what was really nice, we had some nurses speaking as well. Mm -hmm. And that's great. That's so great. it was multidisciplinary. Mm -hmm. um, was there anything else that you thought was um, interesting in terms of the fillers? Talking about the triangle of beauty. The triangle of beauty. <laughs> I love that right. term. Okay, triangle so yeah. okay, so it, 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 uh, can you explain to the listeners what's the triangle of beauty? Sure. I first heard that term when I was in dermatology just a little bit, and I thought, oh, that's a cool term. But uh, learning more and more about the cosmetic world and what can be done out there, as everybody has, you know, as we're younger and we have nice, fruitful little cherry, <laughs> cherry right. cheeks, and everything's moving upward, and we have that triangle moving up. Uh, and it just brings that energy upward as we get older and our gravity takes us, it just turns that triangle the other way. So the fillers are able to really kind of generate um, a little more of, of oomph, you know, so to speak, depending on where it is to bring that triangle back up and bring that energy of, as you look at someone, just a brighten, a, you know, brightening or wide awake or refreshed look. Refreshed certain, look. Yeah, yeah. That's I, I think that's great. And, to, and Go ahead, Brian. Yeah. Oh, no, that's, that's it, basically. So, yeah. You know, Brian was talking about energy and, and, and the lifting of the face. I think that's uh, really important, and it's nice to hear her uh, use uh, words, uh, real technical medical terms like oomph and <laughs> things like that. So I think that's really good. It gives you more oomph, and that's really wonderful. You know, Mary, we have... Um, Mary, we have, um, sorry, we just had a phone go off in here. We're going to, okay, who has your cell phone on? Okay, Nobody. so, all right. Um, that was me. So, um, you know, Mary, you've been, we've been working together now for 18 plus years, I think. And so you, you're evaluating patients sometimes at the front line for us. And we're talking about triangle of beauty. And so can you kind of dive into that a little bit more from what you learned and from the, just all those years of your experience, as well as maybe something that you learned at the California Academy of Cosmetic Surgery Conference? What I really liked is the trend of a uh, more natural look. So, um, yeah. Yeah. of course the triangle of beauty, but also just um, a more natural look, uh, not overfilling or overdoing one area, mm. ad addressing the, the face in a global manner, which I love to do too. What do you mean by that, the global just, manner? Addressing the eyes, the temple, the cheeks, mm -hmm. the chin, you're just looking at it all together. I see. When I meet with a new patient, mm -hmm. client, I like to watch them in animation too. When I assess somebody, I like to see um, how they express themselves, how do they look from all the different angles. Right. Uh, Dr. Tom and I, when we see new patients, we'll take photos and we can use those photos from different angles and as we um, consult the patient, client, we can show them how they look from the side or when they're smiling, when they're not smiling. Um, so but that's, that's just a piece of the puzzle. You're putting it all, the, oh, putting it all together. Mm -hmm. And um, so that is something that I really liked enforced at the con conference for me. I like right. hearing and, and that. That's, I like hearing that's, that. that's really great. And, mm -hmm. and I'm sorry, um, Robin had mentioned it. So we're kind of doing, we're, we're a little schizophrenic here. So we're, we're doing absolutely our KSRO uh, talk live talk radio, but we're also videotaping this so that we can put it on YouTube. And I don't know if you heard, you know, heard Robin's last comment, but that she really likes the, 
the movement to a more natural approach mm -hmm. in terms of enhancing beauty that Mary alluded to. And what I'm going to say is, and I would agree with you, Mary, I think that we're growing up in the cosmetic world, okay? Yeah. Um, it's just natural human tendencies, whether you're a patient, you're a nurse, you're a medical assistant, you're a doctor, if a little bit's good, then a lot more is better, <laughs> right? And we just want to keep on getting bigger and bigger, and we can tend to perseverate on an area. I know that at one time, personally for me, when we started to add some volume to the cheeks, that doing that is a wonderful treatment. Uh, it, when we, when we uh, re volumize the cheeks, it makes me look healthier, and mm. therefore, without even any consideration to that, it makes me look younger, hopefully it makes me look more attractive, and it does that for all of our patients, okay? But then we can perseverate on that, and I remember, Mary, you know the story I'm gonna tell, so I kept then going to Mary when I first had it done, and I said, Mary, I think I need some more, right? And, and what did you finally tell me? Uh, no nope. more right now. <laughs> no more right now. And so Mary, and Mary said to me, no more right now. You don't need any more of those cheeks, okay? And I started laughing, oh and I said, oh my God. I said, I'm just I'm like one her of patients. Them. I'm just like her patients. And if you want to have fun, we should actually do like an uh, outtake videos. Watch us as patients, okay? Oh, we're, I would, you know, I would hand up for they're that. They're like bloopers all over the place. <laughs> and, and so really, it was great that Mary had the chutzpah, if you will, and since it is Hanukkah, I will use a little Yiddish word, the chutzpah, um, that the chutzpah is to say to me, to say, you know, that's enough. And, right. and that's what we need to do to guide our patients. And so that was in the meeting, and it was, was it? really nice to yeah. see. We're getting away from the duck lips. We're getting away from the overinflated face that we're looking at, we're looking at um, giving patients a natural rejuvenation of their face. Um, and, and so Bridie had mentioned, Bridie had mentioned about the triangle of beauty or what we might call, the old fashioned term was what the heart-shaped face. I don't know if you anybody remembers that. Michelle, do you remember that? Yeah. You remember yeah. that, okay. She's an old yeah. fan of the yeah. old <laughs> Michelle and, and Robin and I, you know, we, we remember that. It's the heart-shaped face. Well, that's okay. a triangle of beauty. So the triangle goes from the chin being the bottom of the inverted triangle, and then the two cheekbones are the top, okay? And so that's the beautiful triangle of, of beauty, which Bridie so eloquently said, what does it do? It, it does. Gives you a little oomph. It gives you a little oomph, right? It gives you a little oomph. Okay. Dictionary okay. must be. So it, it gives you Turns a little the ener energy up. Turns the I energy mean, up. I, 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 like, I like that. We're going to use that yes. more often. Uh, turns the energy up. Uh, and so that's something that we do, but not going overboard. And so one of the things that we started to discuss were how to try to do that a little more naturally, uh, and that's with uh, something called biostimulatory. So Mary, I'm gonna ask you actually, so I'm not oh, doing all please. the talking here, to kind of tell me what bio, she's looking yeah, at me like, yeah. come on, get rehearse this. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Will you tell me about biostimulatories. Uh, biostimulatories are uh, products that um, stimulate our own body to reproduce itself mm. uh, like collagen um, primarily um, there's lots of different forms that we use in our office and one of my favorites is the Sculptra actually oh. I love Sculptra and recreating that oomph yeah, if you will. You. <laughs> upward but, energy um, thank you upward energy thank so you. it's injecting like planting little seeds stimulate your body to produce collagen it's a very natural look which I really like for it and most people are good candidates for it. Right. Yeah. And and we talked about that, Robert, for yeah. many, many years. You yeah. and I have been working together for 15 plus years. Uh, Sculptra is actually made of a similar compound uh, chemical as used to make absorbable sutures. Oh, and so wow. what the body does when we put in absorbable sutures, back when I was a general vascular transplant surgeon, let's say I might uh, suture, open up the abdomen to do a transplant, and then we suture it with absorbable sutures to close everything back up, the different muscle layers, uh, the body begins to eat away at the absorbable suture and it lays down scar tissue which is collagen okay. okay and so that's where scarring is good or fibrin deposition collagen deposition so when it does reabsorb the muscles just don't fall apart they're mm -hmm. attached to each other so we take the same sculpture and I'm actually going to ask Brady to tell us what we do but it's in a powder form and then uh, what do how do we prepare our sculpture for our patients when we do injections Brady and I know we didn't rehearse this but you're going to have to I'm going to put you on the spot yeah it, it comes in a vial powder form and we just uh, um, dissolve it reconstitute it mm -hmm. uh, for the okay. first time and then when we're ready to use it then we 
reconstitute it again with another mixture of lidocaine, which oh. helps with, you know, Helps with anesthesia. Yeah, anesthesia. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, okay. And so, and then we just draw it up, and depending on how many vials we're using on the patient, drawing it up, and it's kind of a a, a thicker substance, slurry, so to speak. Slurry. 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 That's, yes, what that's I've heard the word. The word yeah. I so heard. we draw that up into, you know, three to six to nine syringes, depending on how many. Oh, really? Yeah, what we're doing and where. Right. Each area can uh, have different. Uh, volume or depending on what the patient wants as well. So sure. what Vidi is describing is, you said, you know, nine syringes is um, tiny little syringes. We're talking about like insulin syringe size, okay? Oh, okay. Uh, but we're able to use it more globally, okay? So yeah. you're not specifically making the cheek bigger or the chin more protrusion. It will help incrementally, but we're doing that overall revolumization of the face, which is very natural. And that's what I know, Mary, would you agree? It's probably uh, one of the most agree. natural do you treatments guys, do you guys that we like have. That? You like we it, love it. You? Yeah. And we both have it in our faces as well. <laughs> so you know we love it. Okay. Uh, that's awesome. And, and if you're kind of out there listening, because we're throwing out these various terms, and maybe if you haven't listened to us before, the area that I love sculpture for is the area, in, I call it the buccal area, B-U-C-C-A-L. Okay. Uh, look in the mirror and pretend you're second on a straw. Mm -hmm. And so it's that area there <laughs> below your cheeks that can get hollowed out right. or lose volume. And then you start to see smile lines there that go from your cheeks down to your jawline. You start to see some jowling. So all of that, that whole area can be treated with sculpture. So okay. that's one of the reasons we love sculpture. Um, and and, so and we it's, talk, it's the gift that keeps on giving too, isn't it? It does. I, I feel it's one of the longest lasting treatments that we mm -hmm. have. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Very nice. Um, and so that's, that's really great. Um, one of the other treatments that we uh, also offer, and um, we're going to have to talk about it more at the meeting. We didn't really get into it at the meeting as much as our Easy PRF gel. Mm -hmm. um, oh. Mary, how would you describe Easy PRF gel to our listeners? Goodness. Yeah, I call it, a, well, it's kind of the secret sauce. Yeah. Ooh, yeah. Uh, it's spicy. It's your own product, which I love. Oh. Um, and it what also do you mean by your own product? What do you mean from by that? Personally, we do a blood draw, spin out uh. part of it, the way we mix it back up, we inject it like we would do fillers, if you will. Okay. And it, it is also a biostimulatory. So it stimulates it's a collagen, gives you a little bit of volume, a little bit of volume, and it makes the skin look great too. It's, wow, it sounds like it does a lot. Secret sauce. It does. Secret sauce. I like that, Mary. So I, I'm going to have Bridie just, you know, in a, in a maybe in a minute or so. Can you just tell us when we draw up two um, lab vials? Okay, when we're drawing up, do a, a typical blood draw. When we're ready to do the easy PRF gel, what is it that you're doing for us? When because you're the one who's processing. You're the mad scientist. You yeah. and Karina, yes. our other medical yeah. assistant, are the mad scientist. So we draw the blood into two different vials. Uh, they're color coded. And one vial, it has a whole chemistry here. We, we have to put one vial in the spinner for so many minutes, uh, and the other is being cooled. And oh. then once the time is up, we transfer um, the cool one into the spinner with a different um, so what we're talking, yeah, what yeah, we're yeah. talking about it, and as uh, Bridie's talking about it, we're talking about PRF. Many of you have heard about PRP, which is platelet-rich plasma. Okay, so what it is, platelet-rich fibrin (PRF) is activated PRP, and Robin, you've heard me talk about it as what the paramedics, the paramedics of the body, right? So it's not stem cell, but it's all along those biochemical lines, stimulating your own biology to lay down its own collagen healing factors, growth factors, and so forth. So yes. what happens is, is that they, um, we take that, and when we inject them back into the body, as Mary was saying, it stimulates our whole biology to rejuvenate itself, which is, is remarkable. Mm -hmm. But we have to cool it because if we don't cool it, it can clot on us, so oh. we're cooling it. And the other tube is actually being heated up. So Bridie's heating up that other tube, and then she's extracting the fluid out of there. And mm -hmm. what are we extracting when we're doing albumin. that? Albumin. We're, we're extracting the albumin, albumin. which is yeah. protein. And now whenever I say albumin, what is albumin, Michelle? It's like an egg white. There you go. All right. See, we got this down. Our dog and pony show lives. Okay. And so um, we're pulling, and so Bridie's pulling out the albumin. She's being the... 
uh, mad scientist, if you will. It sounds and like so it. Then she's mixing the two together, and Mary, where, and, and because of that, now we have this your own protein gel yes. mixed with a concentration of your own platelet rich fibrin, which is going to stimulate your body to heal, lay down collagen, a little bit of volume, improve the texture of our skin, health of our skin. Where, what areas, Mary, do you like to inject the Easy PRF gel? That's a good question. Well, primarily around the eyes. I think that tissue is very thin, so you need something that's very natural looking and soft and safe. Yes. Um, it works great even all the way up to the crow's feet. So it, um, the area some people refer to as the tear trough, that's a really nice area okay. to do, tear trough. I like to even go over on the side where the crow's feet are. I also have injected it anywhere in the face. Have you? Um, I've right. done where people have those hashtag lines on their face. And the, che just, and the cheeks. Just the side of the there. Um, works great there as well. And, and if you're a naturalist, like, oh, I don't want to have filler, I don't want this or that, this is perfect. This is all you. There right. are no additives to this. This is your blood products. We're just extracting them, concentrating them, remixing them, and giving them back to you. Uh, so we're helping to facilitate your whole healing process, mm -hmm. and that's what's so great about Easy yeah. PRF Gel. Mary does a lot of this, I do as well, and again, Karina, who's not here, our other medical assistant along with Bridie, they're our mad scientists, helping us to do, <laughs> helping us to create the magic, right? Yes, and, like your own filler. And so that's Easy PRF it Gel. It like it's, it does a lot of things. It does. It yes. really does, and so it really improves the health and makes you look healthy and I, I would like as we move into 2024 yes. for whether you're a Gen Z or a millennial uh, a Gen X or a baby boomer welcome that's my club um, <laughs> is that if you can think about making yourself look healthier you will look younger and you will look more attractive um, Robin, I know we have about five minutes left uh, before our, God, our show is going by. Quickly. It's going by quickly. Know, we're having fun. Thank you. So good to have you back. Um, thank you. So the um, the what my talk on was just sort of like the uh, I'm going to say is the uh, the epitome of this biostimulatory, and right. that I talked about using Renuva, R E N U V A, which is cadaver, cadaver fat, and using that to revolumizing our temple and forehead area, giving us a brow lift. So a lot of times oh we goodness. feel like our brows are dropping, and me being three quarters Chinese and quarter Greek, mm -hmm. my brows have dropped and my excess eyelid skin, I'd like to kind of open it up as much as possible without surgery. Sure. And so if we fill that area in my temple area and moving a little bit more towards the middle of the forehead, mm -hmm. that volume actually lifts my brow up and because it lifts my brow up, it lifts my lids up. Wow. And really, all you need is just a millimeter of difference to make a huge difference in the face. You like this. I, 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 I really do. can tell you like this. Right. Well, I mean, I remember, you know, when you get older, you, you're trying to put on your eyeshadow for women, and it's like you can't see the eyeshadow anymore. Yeah. So this sounds like a the Renuva would be something that would be good for that. Yes, and, and thank you for sharing that, Robin. So that's what um, patients, and in particular women, will say to me is that, you know, how they're putting on their makeup, and right? that has changed. So sometimes a little Botox or Dysport in the 11 area or the frown area can lift up the eyebrows. That's one treat. But then adding volume into the temple forehead area lifts up that area for us as well. What's nice about it is it is cadaver fat, but it's like a bone graft. And, and for oh. those I've always described for people who have gum surgery, and I have that because I'm getting older, um, and we get a little bone erosion, your, your dentist or oral surgeon, uh, endodontist, will actually then put a bone graft in that area. And so you get some volume there. But then what happens is your body starts to eat away at it because it is foreign material, okay? okay. Uh, there's no DNA, there's no, you don't have to worry about infections and all those kind of things. It begins to eat away at it. So uh, as it eats away at it, it lays down some collagen, but then it stimulates your own stem cells. And that's what's really great. Your own stem cells now are differentiating into, for the bone, into bone stem cells called that's osteoblasts. Amazing. It's really cool. It is. When we put Renuva in, it's not actually really cadaver fat. It's the fibrous honeycomb system that holds our fat cells. All right. And so what happens is, is that as the body begins to break down on that, it stimulates your own stem cells again into fat 
producing cells. And so you are now what? producing your own fat <laughs> naturally. <laughs> Isn't this is cool, right? And it's producing your own fat. So you're replacing the cadaver fat matrix, right. okay, and there's no cells or DNA in it. Mm -hmm. uh, and it, you're beginning now with your own adipocytes, uh, so your your stem cells turn into adipocytes. I know we're getting kind of scientific nerdy, nerdy here. Getting nerdy. Uh, <laughs> but those adipocytes or fat, adipose tissue fat, are beginning to lay down fat in that area, and it's a great natural way of doing it. And um, and we do have somebody who actually had it done here in the studio. Oh, she didn't know we were going to talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> I have a secret about you, Mary. <laughs> oh, 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 Bear's oh, okay, Dr. Okay. Tom. <laughs> so, Mary, what did you like about the uh, Renuva for I know, it just uh, lifting amazing. the bow in the temple area? Oh, so. I like the that it's replacing my own tissue. I love that concept, that it's a uh, more natural look. Right. Um, it's difficult to find something that works well in that area, and I find the Renuva is uh, very soft and and soft looking. Why is yeah, it difficult just, to just, find something that works? Because the thin, is, the skin is thinner the, there? The skin or, is thin, and a lot of the fillers are just too thick for that area. Right. It's it lumpy. It doesn't look natural. Right. So it's just I replacing see. what you had before. So, yeah. <laughs> you know, that just has come out in the last year or two, hasn't it? It's just been around for a couple of years yeah. now, and since I did so much traditional fat grafting, it was right it. in my wheelhouse, especially I being see. a transplant surgeon in the past. Uh, you know, remember, we kidneys are cadaver kidneys, and when we did transplants, it all uh, just fell right into my lap, and, uh, and I have to tell you, I love it, and that's why I spoke about it at the California Academy of Cosmetic Surgery meeting. That, well, those, okay, can we go and just, uh, we've got about a minute left, can, can okay. go and review, you know, the top things that you discovered at this conference in San Diego? So what I'm going to, I'm going to summarize it quickly, is that Biden, uh, being the newcomer there, was was just really kind of impressed with how it was so global, the different specialties that get into cosmetic medicine and how you can approach different problems. She liked the way you could get an um for upward energy by enhancing the face naturally. Uh, Mary uh, saw a natural progression uh, in terms of our treatment. And then for me, again, biostimulatories like Sculptra, uh, like Easy PRF Gel and Renuva are great. Congratulations to you for being invited to as a lecturer. Thank and you. Mary and Brody, thank you so much for being here today. You guys did good. Thank you. Thank you.